And the readings will now be given by Gary. Good evening. I will read from the Bible. James. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Nehemiah The words of Nehemiah the son of Hakaliah. It came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him. And I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not before time been sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad? seeing thou art not sick. This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid, and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldst send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it, so it pleased the king to send me. But when Sanballat the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn, and despised us, and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Then answered I them, and said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. But it came to pass that when Sandal had heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the haberguns, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which builded on the wall, and they that bear burdens, with those that laded, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies, heard that I had builded the wall, and that there was no breach left therein, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, 
so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works, and on the prophetess Nodiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month Elul, in fifty and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. I will now read correlative passages from Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. Choose ye, my beloved brethren, the divine might of truth demands well-doing in order to demonstrate truth, and this not alone in accord with human desire but with spiritual power. St. John writes, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. The seer leaves of faith without works, scattered abroad in Zion's waste places, Appeal to reformers, show me thy faith by thy works. Christian science is not a dweller apart in royal solitude. It is not a law of matter, nor a transcendentalism that heals only the sick. This science is a law of divine mind a persuasive animus, an unerring impetus, an ever-present help. Its presence is felt, for it acts, and acts wisely, always unfolding the highway of hope, faith, understanding. It is the higher criticism the higher hope, and its effect on man is mainly this, that the good which has come into his life, examination compels him to think genuine, whoever did it. A Christian scientist verifies his calling. Choose ye. When, by losing his faith in matter and sin, one finds the spirit of truth, then he practices the golden rule spontaneously, and obedience to this rule spiritualizes man. For the world's nullens, volens, cannot enthrall it. Lust, dishonesty, sin disable the student. They preclude the practice or efficient teaching of Christian science, the truth of man's being. The scripture reads, He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. On this basis, How many are following the way-shower? We follow truth only as we follow truly, meekly, patiently, spiritually, blessing saint and sinner with the leaven of divine love which woman has put into Christendom and medicine. 
The pride of place or power is the prince of this world that hath nothing in Christ. Our great master said, Except ye become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven, the reign of righteousness, the glory of good, healing the sick and saving the sinner. The height of my hope must remain. Glory be to thee, thou God most high and nigh. Whatever is not divinely natural and demonstrably true in ethics, philosophy, or religion is not of God, but originates in the minds of mortals. It is the Adam dream, according to the scriptural allegory, in which man is supposed to start from dust and woman to be the outcome of man's rib. Marriage synonymous with legalized lust and the offspring of sense, the murderers of their brothers. Wholly apart from this mortal dream, this illusion and delusion of sense, Christian science comes to reveal man as God's image, his idea, coexistent with him, God giving all, and man having all that God gives. Whence then came the creation of matter, sin, and death, mortal pride and power, prestige or privilege. The first commandment of the Hebrew Decalogue, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and the golden rule are the all-in-all all of Christian science. They are the spiritual idealism and realism which, when realized, constitute a Christian scientist. Heal the sick, reform the sinner, and rob the grave of its victory. The spiritual understanding which demonstrates Christian science enables the devout scientist to worship not an unknown God, but him whom, understanding even in part, he continues to love more and to serve better. Forgetting the golden rule and indulging sin, men cannot serve God. They cannot demonstrate the omnipotence of divine mind that heals the sick and the sinner. Human will may mesmerize and mislead man. Divine wisdom, never. We cannot serve two masters. Do we love God supremely? Are we honest, just, faithful? Are we true to ourselves? God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. To abide in our unself, better self, is to be done forever with the sins of the flesh, the wrongs of human life, the tempter and temptation the smile and deceit of damnation. When we have overcome sin in all its forms, men may revile us and despitefully use us, and we shall rejoice, for great is our reward in heaven. <laughs> 